Hi, my name is Ben Prince, and I am an allergist immunologist at Nationwide Children's Hospital and an associate professor of pediatrics at The Ohio State University in Columbus, Ohio. Um, I have the pleasure of talking to you today about a really common question that I oftentimes get from individuals in clinic, and that is, what's the relationship between food allergies and some adverse reactions that sometimes might be triggered by food, such as reflux or uh, chronic migraines? So first, before I start, I want to just give a quick overview of what I mean when I use the term food allergy. As you can imagine, there's a wide variety of different adverse reactions that can occur because of foods. And one of the first defining features that I think about as I'm sort of triaging and, and thinking about these adverse reactions has to do with whether or not your immune system is involved in the reaction. A true food allergy occurs uh, when you have an adverse immunologic reaction, typically towards a protein that's within a food. Some common features of a true food allergy are that these uh, reactions are very reproducible and can sometimes be triggered by just even a very small amount uh, of that food when it's ingested. Um, as far as the, the, what the signs and symptoms of a true food allergic reaction look like, it really depends on the mechanism. Um, sometimes antibodies can be involved in the reaction um, that are recognizing that protein in the food. Other times immunologic cells are involved. But regardless, it, as I mentioned, it should happen every single time and a defining feature also of this kind of reaction is that patients that are allergic to foods typically have to strictly avoid that food because sometimes a significant reaction can occur upon ingestion and sometimes that reaction can be life-threatening. In contrast, um, adverse reactions that can occur to foods that are not involving your immune system, um, uh, there's a wide variety of those and, and they can be uh, pharmacologic properties uh, of the food. So an example that I think about uh, when I'm talking to patients has to do with say an individual, uh, individual drinks a large uh, caffeinated beverage. They might feel tachycardic, like their heart's racing. They might feel flushed, a little jittery. And, and that would occur in any individual that's drinking that amount of caffeine. And it has to do with the uh, pharmacologic properties of that caffeine in that beverage. Another type of uh, adverse reaction that does not involve your immune system are toxic reactions. And, and a common example that I give uh, in this kind of reaction has to do with uh, like food poisoning. So in this example, the patient would uh, consume a toxin in the food uh, that was a result of a bacterial contamination of the food. And uh, as in the first patient, they're gonna experience symptoms of that ingestion. Um, there might be vomiting or diarrhea, abdominal pain. And that reaction, again, would occur in any individual that would consume that food. You wouldn't have to be, have a, def a defining host feature uh, for that reaction to occur. There are other kinds of reactions that have to do with metabolic properties of the food. Um, and so an example that I give uh, to this kind of adverse reaction uh, would be like a lactose intolerance. So um, in individuals that are lactose intolerant, they are uh, missing an enzyme that's important for digesting lactose, which is a sugar, not a protein, in dairy products. And as a result of that, that lactose um, goes through the gest uh, gastrointestinal tract undigested, and the bacteria that live there, they see that as dinner, so they eat it. And as a result of that, they produce lots of gases and carbon dioxide um, that manifest in the symptoms of lactose intolerance, bloating, gas, et cetera. There are also other kinds of adverse reactions to foods that are not well-defined. We don't know the mechanism, and, and some of these lie within kind of uh, you know, the food triggers that we were talking about uh, relating to uh, gastroesophageal reflux disease or chronic migraines. So gastroesophageal reflux disease uh, is a pretty common condition affecting around 20% of uh, uh, adults in the United States, and it has to do with when excess acid goes from the stomach up the esophagus in the back of the throat, Patients will oftentimes feel pain, they'll feel burning in their chest or heartburn. Uh, they can sometimes feel bloated or, or want to belch or burp. They also will feel like something's stuck in the back of their throat, and these are common symptoms of reflux. Many individuals that, that suffer from reflux will oftentimes um, state that certain foods make their reflux worse. Some examples of these kinds of foods include caffeinated beverages, chocolate, acidic foods, spicy foods, and foods that have a high fat content. And they find that when they avoid these foods, um, it makes them feel better. Their reflux isn't uh, as, as significant uh, or bothersome. Um, as far as chronic migraines go, so this is another pretty common condition affecting about 12 to 15 percent of people uh, in the United States uh, and results from neurologic changes in the brain that manifest as pretty debilitating uh, headaches that can last for hours or even days, a pretty significant disease. There are actually many different triggers um, that people will uh, state makes their migraines come on, including um, changes in weather, stress, hormonal changes, um, bright or flashing lights, 
And in some individuals, we'll also talk about foods. Uh, typically, these foods um, will contain either high amounts of nitrates or sometimes another uh, um, uh, amino acid called tyramine. Um, and sometimes even just alcohol can also be uh, uh, talked about as a trigger for migraines. Um, while historically, these, the common practice was to avoid uh, foods that were thought to trigger migraines, really interesting, in more recent research, they've done some behavioral changes um, where you actually expose yourself to small amounts uh, and, and sort of desensitize yourself to your trigger. And small studies have shown that that can even be more effective than just strictly avoiding what you feel is triggering your migraines. Regardless, I would encourage you to talk to your doctor. And, and the thing that I want to leave you with is if you feel that you have a food um, that's causing an adverse reaction, um, you know, even though it's not related to your immune system, um, some good ways to kind of elicit whether or not you have a food intolerance uh, or an adverse reaction to a food that's not immune, immunologically mediated um, would be to do a food symptom diary. So you know, taking, uh, when you experience certain symptoms that you think might be uh, triggering your food, um, write, write that day down and kind of just look over time to see if there's a pattern. If you see an identifying food that you think might be associated with the symptoms you're experiencing, remove it from your diet for only about two to three weeks to see if those symptoms go away. If they go away, I would encourage you to put it back in your diet because this is not, you know, um, uh, sometimes just association does not mean causation. Uh, and so we want to make sure that if you're going to strictly take a food out of your diet, that it's one that you should be actually avoiding. We don't want to take you or have you take a, a large list of foods out of your diet because that can have other implications such as nutri nutritional deficiencies and, and, and things like that. Um, but if you do feel that there's a pattern, um, you know, try taking it out, see if you feel better. Um, the thing that I want to leave you with, though, is that the good news is, is unlike a food allergic reaction, uh, food intolerances, individuals can sometimes, oftentimes, uh, consume small amounts of that food, uh, and they don't have to worry about those life-threatening complications that can sometimes occur in patients that have true food allergy. So with that, uh, I want to encourage you to go ahead and look to the Quad IA website for more information and talk to your, talk to your doctor, talk to your allergist.